The very warmest of welcomes to you indeed. The setting is the Joinext Arena in Dresden, Germany, and you're watching the ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. It's the final day of competition, and the World Cup calendar is drawing to a close. Who will get their hands on the Crystal Globe? We will have clarity in due course. But first and foremost, we've got a busy session to bring you from the track.
great action, great excitement. What else would you expect? This is short track speed skating after all. It's one of the most spectacular sports to watch. And there's a great crowd gathered in Dresden, a real city that has a love affair with this sport, ready to watch and to celebrate, especially if you're fans of the Republic of Korea. Their skaters were in very fine form yesterday and are poised to make it a Korea Republic clean sweep of the Crystal Globe. But let's not count chickens before they've hatched because this is all still to come. We're going to start with the women's and men's uh, 500 meters quarterfinal action. Then we'll bring you the uh, same stage of the competition in the 1,000 meters before turning our attention to the semi-finals in around about an hour and 15 minutes time. All of that will bring us to those medal races and we'll have a couple of relays as well to round off our coverage. Thank you very much for joining all of the action from Dresden, wherever in the world you call home, whoever you're supporting, however long you've been enjoying the wonderful excitement that is short track speed skating. I hope you're having a lovely weekend and I'm sure it's going to get even better with what's to come on the track now. These are the officials who will be superintending the competition. Best of luck to them as well because they are likely to be busy. They always are in short track speed skating. The women's 500 meters quarterfinals, the first order of business. The Joy Next Arena in Dresden, Germany, and this penultimate World Cup of short track speed skating. The season drawing to a close. This is who is bidding for a place in the semi-final. We have Kim Butam, Michel Belzebor, Yi so Yon, Yana Khan and Aurelie Levesque. Kim Butam, the four-time Olympic Winter Games medalist. She's conserved energy when it's come to World Cup events this season, has made a choice not to compete more than she has wanted to, more than she's needed to. She's spoken of wanting to get Kim 2.0 out on the ice, focused on the next Olympic Winter Games. And she's up against the impressive young Michelle Velzebor. This is the first quarterfinal in the women's 500 meters, and it is Kim Boutin who has started strongly, as you'd expect. Velzebor slotting into second position, no surprise there as well. We watch Iso Yon, the veteran from Suwon in the Republic of Korea, who's in third position as things stand. Khan and Levesque in fourth and fifth. Now we see Velzebor move out into the front with a couple of laps to go. Kim Butat has got to watch it. E over the shoulder as well. Might uh, see a move coming now in this very last lap from the athlete from Korea Republic. But it looks as though it's going to be Velzebor and Butat ahead of E on the line. First and second automatically go through to the semi-final stage. There will be a maximum of two fastest third place skaters. So he is in contention at the moment. Let's have a look back at this impressive performance from Belzebor and Bhutan. It's all about doing no more than is necessary in these 
quarterfinals, and that's what we saw from Belzebor and Kim Bhutan. They are secure and moving through to the penultimate race. Heat number two, women's 500 meters quarterfinals. Selma Poutsma of the Netherlands, who is second coming into this weekend in the 500 meter standings. Sixth overall in the Crystal Globe rankings. This is the second quarterfinal in the women's 500 meters. Strong beginning from Selma Pautzma with Kamila Stomowska of Poland behind her in second position. It is Elizaveta Sidorko of Ukraine. Third Asting stand, but a real gap already opening with these front two. Pautzma ahead of Stomowska. Stomowska, who set her personal best in the 500 meters in Dresden last year. The Pautzma relay champion from the Olympic Winter Games, comfortably ahead at the bell. Just to remind you, only two guaranteed to go through. Pautzma and Stomowska are going to be those two. They're into the semi finals. And it is the Italian, the 21-year-old Chiara Betti, who has taken third position. So Pouncema and Stormovska advancing. beginning for the uh, Dutch women in this 500 meters uh, competition. Pautzma and uh, the young Pole Camilla Stormowska, the automatic qualifiers for the semi-final stage. Chiara Betty has to watch and wait. And we move in a moment to the penultimate quarterfinal. This is the third quarter final in the 500 meters competition for women at the Dresden World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. Cassandra Velzebor wearing uh, helmet number eight. The leader in the 500 meters coming into this weekend of competition. Third in the overall standings, now fourth in the Crystal Globe ranking. Gabriela Topolska, mixed uh, relay silver medalist at her home European Championships in Gdansk earlier this season, three times a World Cup medalist in relay competition. We also have uh, Sohi Min wearing number 18, the uh, youngster from Seoul. Valentina Aschic is 46 and 49, Zofia Konya. Sandra Velzebor of the Netherlands, the leader in the 500 meters World Cup standings and a great performer overall in the Crystal Globe rankings is well ahead of So Hui Min of the Republic of Korea with Topolska trying to get close to So to push for second place because Velzebor has had enough of the rest of them and is just doing this all by herself at the moment. It's very potent and aggressive racing from the 22 year old uh, Dutch athlete whose form has been sparkling in World Cup competition. She hits the bell, she hits her stride, and the rest watch and wait. Now, what can Topolska do getting close to the line? Not quite enough, it is so who has secured second place behind Cassandra Velzebor, but that was just crackerjack from Velzebor. Living up to pre-match billing, it's safe to say. Cassandra Velzebor of the Netherlands. Oh. 
confirmation of Cassandra Velzebor and So Min's place in the semi-finals of the women's 500 metres in Dresden. Gabriela Topolska, good effort, but she'll go no further. Not fast enough compared to what we've seen already. Just a couple of places available for the uh, third place finishers. The final quarter final in the women's 500 metres in Dresden. The experienced Canadian Renee Sting is in this race, wearing number 21. And she has a collection of eight World Cup honours coming into this competition in Dresden. We also watch uh, Wang Ye, 18 from Beijing. She's been very impressive this season in the 500. This is going to be an interesting one. The women's 500 meters final quarter final with the top two advancing to the semi final stage. It's Wang Ye who is fourth in the 500 meters World Cup rankings, starting well ahead of Park Ji Won. The uh, silver medalist at the Four Continents Championships in this event. We have Julie Letai of the United States of America in third position, the Boston-born athlete now based in Salt Lake City, and uh, Annabelle Green, the 21-year-old representing Great Britain in uh, fifth place. It's Wong and Park very tight, very close together. It's going to be an interesting finish uh, for third place, and uh, third has just been taken by Sting with uh, Wong and Park, one and two. So we have uh, a video review in progress. First video review that we've had, so not confirmed the results just yet. has been completed. So it is good news for Canada. They have a, a place secured as one of the fastest third place qualifiers with Wong and Park. The automatic advances to the semi-final stage. That brings to a close the women's 500 metres. And let's uh, just take stock of all of those qualifiers now. It's going to be a fascinating semi-final stage, isn't it? But let's now turn our attention back to quarter-final action and the men's equivalent stage of the 500 metres. The men's 500 metres quarter-finals next on the track of the Joint Next Arena. This is heat number one, and we have Stein Desmet of Belgium, who is fifth in the uh, 1500 meters rankings. It was a very good uh, 1500 meters day for the Desmet family yesterday. Hannah taking the win. What a final time for the men. Big start there from Stendus Met in this 500 meter race. Andrew Ho of the United States of America and Marcus Howard are attempting to block everyone else off and uh, create a little breathing space for Team USA, which they've done nicely. Desmet, though, is in control of this. Now, what will we see from Lee Jong Min of uh, the Republic of Korea, who is uh, a little way back at the moment? Now, the USA really well positioned as we hit the bell to get at least one place in the semi-final stage. It's Andrew Ho 
who is behind Stein Desmet. And Desmet and Ho are first and second with a good time posted by Marcus Howard. Lee Jong Min. No further for him in this competition. Good work from the two Americans. Will Marcus Howard have done enough to make it into the semi-final stage? We will discover that in a few races time. Quarterfinal number two, the men's 500 metres in the ISU World Cup short track speed skating in Dresden, Germany. Denis Nikisha of Kazakhstan wears number 11. 35 is Łukasz Kuszynski of Poland. Nikisha, a medalist at the World University Games in this distance. And he won a bronze medal at the Seoul World Cup in the 500 metres. The Last event of 2023. There is Jonas Hammermüller. Congratulations to him. He's from Dresden. He turns 20 next month. He had a dreadful last year with knee trouble. It's triumphant that he's made it out onto the ice and has got to this stage of the competition. Good luck to him. <laughs> Men's 500 metres quarterfinal number two in Dresden and a strong imposing beginning from the experienced Denis Nikisha of Kazakhstan with 24-year-old Oleg Hande of Ukraine in second place. What will we see from Łukasz Kuszynski of Poland? Oh, goodness me, that's a really problematic moment for Hande. And he's uh, slipped out of this. Will it be reviewed? We'll find out in due course. But uh, Nikisha is now ahead of Kuszynski. And it is uh, Kai Hausman of the Netherlands who's attempting to work his way into second place. If he can get a tight turn here, he might be able to do it. But Kuszynski held him off on the line. Nikisha and Łukasz Kuszynski ahead of Kai Hausman. And we look back at this race that had problems for Oleg Hande. Started so well, didn't he? The gentleman wearing 71. very tidy there Dennis Nikisha the education graduate from Kustanai Social Technical University his home city on the Tobol River in the north of Kazakhstan Dennis Nikisha and Wukash Kuszynski automatic advances Kai Hausman is in contention at the moment but we're only at the halfway stage of the quarterfinals Quarterfinal number three, the men's 500 metres at the ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. Kim Tae-sung and Pietro Siegel will be locking horns in this one. Kim was very close to a medal in the 500 metres at the World Cup in Dresden last year. And in Pietro Siegel, we have got the reigning champion of the world and the European champion as well in the 500 meters. Oh, and by the way, we've also got Felix Roussel, Quentin Furcock and So Yi Ra. This is poised to be a barnstormer, frankly, of a quarterfinal. This is one of those races where you look at it and you go, is this really only the quarterfinal stage? What depth there is in this race. That ice nice and ready because we've got 
some very fine athletes about to take centre stage. Felix Roussel, young man from uh, Quebec. At the heart of the winter sports world, Quebec, beautiful part of the world and renowned for its uh, excellence in training across so many different sports on the ice and the snow. Roussel was a silver medalist at his home World Cup in Montreal. Then Quentin Furcock, he was the silver medalist in Beijing, the bronze medalist in Montreal. He's fifth in the 500 meters standings. You would expect one of the fastest third place finishers to come from this race, wouldn't you? So who's going to be the brilliant athlete that misses out? What a quarter final. Well, I was about to say, what a quarter final we've got in store, but uh, we haven't quite got it in store yet. Perhaps it's not the greatest surprise that we should get a restart in this particular race, knowing that there is such speed among these competitors and the impetus to really come flying out of the metaphorical blocks has got to be in the minds of all of these athletes. This is going to be a very, very tough moment for Pietro Siegel. And he's gone. And look at that. We lose the champion of the world. Gosh, this sport is tough. This sport is down to the very tiniest of margins. The world champion gone. Just four of them now after Pietro Siegel of Italy was penalized for a false start. The world champion out, Kim Tae-sung in control. His only individual World Cup title won in the 500 meters in Almaty in Kazakhstan last season. Oh my word, what a race this is. So much drama. Kim is out. Roussel and Furkok are now in the qualifying positions with So Yira suddenly, absolutely extraordinarily, working to try and get this second place spot away from Furkok. I don't think he's going to do it. It was close, but not quite. Roussel and Quentin Furkok are the two that have gone through. Well, I said at the start of this race, I asked the question, who would be the outstanding athlete that missed out? Two of them, two of them gone. Sigel didn't even get to start. Kim didn't get to finish. All of that to the benefit of Felix Roussel and Quentin Furcock. What a quarter final. Just fascinating. Felix Roussel, Quentin Furcock confirmed. Siegel penalised for the false start. Kim unable to finish. Drama, drama, and more drama. Now we move to the last one. The final quarter final. Jordan Pierre Gilles, Yoshinaga Kazuki, Tuun Boa, Radek Fikus, Hugo Bosma. There is uh, Fikus, the 22 year old who actually has competed at world championship level in roller speed skating. His younger sister Marquetta competes internationally in both of them as well. Picked up a nasty injury in Dresden last year, but he's in great form here, 12 months on. You just saw before that Yoshinagi, Yoshinaga Kazuki, I should say. Asian Winter Games medalist. 
in his home country. There is Hugo Bosma. Very interesting race. Not sure that Bosma got the best start, and that might be costly because we've got some uh, good tactical racers here. Jordan Pierre Gilles has moved out into a strong lead. He is the 500 meters leader this season in World Cup competition. And he's proving why at the moment. Bosma has now lost second place to Yoshinaga, but uh, that might be vulnerable because the lines have gone for some of these athletes. And it's allowed uh, Tuan Boer to come through into second position. Yoshinaga just got caught out a little there, and it means that uh, Jordan Pierre Gilles and Tuan Boer are the two that have advanced automatically. So no great surprise that we see the overall World Cup 500 meter leader going through. And we lost uh, by the looks of things Radek Ficus during that one. Pierre Gilles and uh, Tuan Boer are the only two that have made it through from that race. So here are the athletes that have got to the semi final stage Marcus Howard and Soyira, the two third place finishers who've secured their spot. So it was indeed from that jam-packed quarter-final that we got one of the fastest third-place uh, finishers, as expected. Now to the uh, women's 1,000 metres second stage of this weekend. Quarter-finals coming right up. And we have in this race the returning Susanna Schulting. Very uh, special moment that she's back in competition after a nasty injury at the end of last year. And we've got Hannah Desmet as well of Belgium. Great performer over all of the disciplines and well positioned in Crystal Globe but ranking. She's moved up from overall fourth to overall third as a result of her fantastic 1500 meters win yesterday. But there is the reigning champion from last season, 26 year old Susanna Schulting. three times an Olympic champion and the reigning two-time champion in this event at the Olympic Winter Games. Oh, by the way, we've also got Yara van Kerkhoff, Claudia Gagnon and Elisa Comfortola. This is an extremely strong quarter-final. This could be a very fast one. The women's 1,000 metres first quarter final. Anna Desmet taking the early lead in this, but that's been usurped by Claudia Gagnon. We'll just wait to see what sort of finish we'll get from Schulting, who's happy enough in third position at the moment. Then it is Comfortola and then Yara van Kerkhoff in fifth place. Anna Desmet back into the lead, having won the 1500 metres yesterday in an exceptional example of race management. Can she bring that to the 1000 with the reigning two time Olympic Winter Games champion behind her? It's quite a task, but Desmet is quite a racer. Can Claudia Gagnon capitalise on the two of them? Desmet and Schulting being so focused on each other. Desmet herself, the bronze medalist at the Beijing Olympic Winter Games.
to the bell. Desmet then Schulting, then Gagnon. No need for Schulting to really push to take this one. She's comfortable in second place. Desmet, very good race from the Belgian. The 27 year old in really the prime of her career at the moment. Now this is going to be further scrutinized. That's what's being looked at, that move right on the inside. Lisa Comfortola. Indeed, Elisa Confortola has been penalised. Desmet Schulting, automatic qualifiers for the semi-final stage. Gagnon waiting and watching. It does seem reasonably clear-cut, this doesn't it, the uh, move made. Final number two, the women's 1,000 metres. Courtney Soro of Canada playing number two. Eighth in the Crystal Globe rankings, we have Shim Suk Hee wearing number six. Shim Suk Hee on the inside just about managing to hold off Courtney Soro at the start, but Soro now just comfortably moves around the side. A couple of young athletes from the People's Republic of China in this one. We have Zhang Jianning wearing 100, she's 18. Was a silver medalist at the World Junior Championships in the relay in Dresden last year. And Song Yifei, who is just a year older, wearing number 124. Also in this one is Hirai Ami, the experienced athlete from Japan, wearing number 37. She has been a, a relay medalist in World Cup competition. So it is the bronze medalist at the Four Continents Championships, Shim suk -hee, who is ahead of uh, Zhang Jianning now, the uh, young Chinese athlete has moved into an advanced position. We've seen some bold racing from the young Chinese team at this World Cup in Dresden. It's been exciting. Ask questions now of Soro. Soro tends to be very good at answering questions, doesn't she? Here we go. Soro trying to get round on the inside. That's difficult. Can she do it? Well, well, well. Shin Saki and Zhang Jianning taking first and second with Courtney Soro, bronze medalist at the World Cup in Seoul, in third place. That was high impact and high effectiveness from Zhang Jianning. Pump of the fist from the teenager from China. 
realizing what she'd done and who had finished third behind her. Two fastest third place skaters go through. Siro is in the mix with two races remaining. But Shim Saki and Zhang Jianning are okay. And into the semi finals without any anxiety over these next couple of races. Quarter final number three, the women's 1,000 meters. Corinne Stoddard of the United States of America wears helmet number 10. We've got wearing 39, Park Ji Yun of the Republic of Korea, bronze medalist in Montreal at the World Cup, her first ever individual medal. She has been a relay champion twice. There is Gloria Yoratti, 23-year-old from Italy. She was the silver medalist at 1,500 meters at the European Championships in Poland. And Corinne Stoddard, who has been a silver medalist this season in the 1,000 meters in World Cup competition. Quarterfinal number three, the women's 1,000 meters at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Park ji Yun of the Republic of Korea now watches Gloria Yorati move past. We've got Corinne Stoddard in this one in third position at the moment. Just watch uh, Li Xuen, though, of the People's Republic of China, the 17-year-old, because as I mentioned earlier, we've seen some bold and exciting racing from the uh, young athletes from the People's Republic of China. She's got a lot to do at this stage. Did she get herself into a bit of hot water there? Yorati leading Park. Top two automatically qualify for the semi-final stage. Now it is Park Giannis as Stoddard makes a very well-timed move. That's great racing from the American Seattle's Corin Stoddard. And now Stoddard just opens up a big advantage. Timed that so well. Great efficiency of racing. Now Yorati seeks to pressurize Park to get second place. They could get in each other's way and Yorati, uh, in the end, I think, might have finished behind Gwendolyn Dodé of France, who capitalized on the two, giving each other a lot of attention. have that confirmation that it was the French athlete, 25-year-old Gwendolyn Dodé, who got third place right on the line. Well done to her. And well done to her, Corinne Stoddard. Stoddard and Park advancing automatically. Gwendolyn Dodé, despite her third place finish, isn't fast enough to be one of those two third place finishers. We come to the very last quarter final, but we've saved a bit of a blockbuster. It's the last women's 1000 meters quarter final in Dresden at this World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. And we have Kim Gilly of the Republic of Korea, who is the overall leader for the Crystal Globe ahead of Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States of America. 
and she won the 1,000 meters yesterday to put herself 80 points ahead of the American, the first of the two 1,000 meters. Now, meanwhile, also in this is Danae Blay of Canada from the suburb of Montreal, Chateauguay. Italian Ariana Siegel wears 30. Germany's Lisa Eckstein is wearing number 16. She's such a fine tactician, is Kim. This contest with Santos Griswold is very exciting. But the two of them will absolutely be aware that this is only a quarter final. Uh, that's uh, Siegel who's down. As, uh, the front two have opened up a big advantage. Santos Griswold over Kim Gilly, who really took her foot uh, off the accelerator, knowing that she was secure. Blay in third position. Santos Griswold and Kim, along with Danae Blay, who is one of the fastest two outside of the top two. They go to the semi-final stage. Here are your qualifiers for the semi-finals in the women's 1,000 metres. Two Canadians, Claudia Gagnon and Danae Blay, are the two non-automatic qualifiers. Well done to them. The men's quarterfinals for 1,000 metres. It's going to provide us with some great entertainment. What a way to start. We have Park Gion, who is the gentleman that leads the Crystal Globe standings and looks poised to retain the title that he won last time around. Twenty-eight point advantage over Stephen Dubois for Park. In this, we also have uh, Luca Spechenhauser of Italy and Itzhak Delat of the Netherlands. The first of the men's 1,000 meters quarterfinals, the second set of 1,000 meters races after Park Juon won yesterday, and he's ahead of Itzhak Delat with Luca Speckenhauser in third position. Number 44, Yekebolan Shemulchanov of Kazakhstan is fourth. And we have Bolaj Bontovic, the youngster from Hungary, four times a winter European Youth Olympic Festival gold medalist, making up the field. Now then, Shemulchanov has uh, put himself into a better position now, but it's still Park and uh, Delat with just a little breathing space over the athlete from Kazakhstan, who's making a good advance, though, to try to put some pressure on the front, too. Park Jihon. It's going to hit the belt ahead of Itzhak Delat. There was Maybe a tiny opportunity for Delat to get through, but Park doesn't give many chances for others. And, oh, that's close on the line. Speckenhauser coming somewhat out of nowhere to nearly wrestle second place away from Itzhak Delat. Great effort from the young Italian.
So far, so good for the gentleman who's got his heart set on another sparkling crystal globe. And who would deprive him of it? Can anyone? Mark Gion and Itzhak Delat with Luca Speckenhauser producing a very good finish. And he will be hopeful of getting one of those two spots. Quarterfinal number two in the men's 1,000 metres. We have Friso uh, Emmons of the Netherlands. European Championship silver medalist at 1,500 metres. Pascal Dion wearing a helmet number four. Bronze medalist in Seoul at the last World Cup in December. And then there is the uh, outstanding uh, William Dongenou. The men's 1,000 metres quarter final stage. The second of four races. It's a packed one. Some great experience here. And uh, some very informed athletes. It's Kim Gun U who leads. Uh, well, I say that he doesn't anymore because William Dongenou, the uh, brilliant young Canadian who's been having an outstanding season, he won the 1500 meters yesterday. He moved ahead for a moment. Kim takes back that lead. Friso Emmons of the Netherlands is in third position. Pascal Dion, fourth. We also have Watanabe Keita wearing number 45 for Japan and the 16-year-old from Turkey, Mohamed Buzdag, wearing 133. He's done fantastically to get into this race. Look at the company that he's keeping here. There are going to be a couple of items for further scrutiny from the officials, so we won't have full clarity immediately by the looks of things at the end of this race. Now, meanwhile, Dongenou ahead on the bell. Friso Emmons in second place. Pascal Dion now has moved up into third. Kim Kanu has got a lot to do and too much to do in the end. Can't get into third position. So Dongenou wins it ahead of Friso Emmons. Pascal Dion finishing well to take third position. Review ongoing. It was a race with plenty of jostling for position. Just wonder if there were any uh, illegal maneuvers performed there. Well, Kim Gunu has been penalized William Dongenou and Friso Emmons the automatic qualifiers Pascal Dion finishing in third place and no change to the top three courtesy of that penalty I think it's yes their arm block from uh, Kim did wonder if maybe in the uh, jostling around for position we had the potential for an illegal move or two this is the third quarter final Six strong field 
the men's third quarter final in the 1,000 meters in Dresden. We have wearing 26, Jang Sung U of Korea Republic, 29 is Brendan Corey of Australia, 32, Kazakhstan, Adil Galiakhmetov, 172, Li Xin Yu of the People's Republic of China, 174, his teammate Jang Bo Hao, and 184, Dan Koss of the Netherlands. It is Koss who has gone into an early position of advantage ahead of 17-year-old Jang Bo Hao, who has just experienced life in the central position on Olympic Winter Games at podium at youth level in Gangwon. Kos ahead of Brendan Corey. Adil Galiakhmetov is in third position. Dankos, the young man who's only just turned 21, who's new to World Cup competition. He's making his mark here. He's really making his mark, but now we watch for Jang Sung U to move round and to earn himself one of the automatic spots along with Dan Kos. Galiakhmetov finishing third. Good finish there from Jang Sung U. A strong display from young Dan Koss. Dan Koss and Jang Sung U of the Netherlands and Korea Republic respectively qualifying with Adil Galiakhmetov hopeful that this next race will be slower. We move to heat number four in the quarter final stage of this competition, the men's 1,000 meters in Dresden at the World Cup. The Latvian Robert Krusbergs, gold medalist in Montreal last year, first Latvian World Cup champion. Kruzberg starts strongly with pressure coming right from the beginning, though, from Canada's Stephen Dubois. Got himself into a great position. What a clever start that was from the uh, Quebecois athlete. Came into this weekend looking at a possible victory in the Crystal Globe. It's still possible, but he's had Park Ji-on move in front of him. But Dubois, second in the 1,000 meter league table as well. He's just had such a strong racing season. Chris Berg's up there with him, just uh, sitting behind the front too is Hayashi Kosei, the 20 year old from Japan, whose mother competed at the 1998 Olympic Winter Games in this sport. He's a university undergraduate who's keeping the family tradition going. Fourth place for Mattia Antonioli of Italy at the moment. On the line, comfortable for Dubois and Kruisbergs with Hayashi third. Stephen Dubois and Robert Kruisbergs securing their places in the semi-final stage of this competition.
Stephen Dubois and Robert Skrusbergs of Canada and Latvia respectively qualifying with Hayashi Kose finishing third but in not quick enough a time to be one of those two gentlemen from outside the top two who's made it through to the semi-final stage. We'll be back in just under 20 minutes' time for the semi-finals in the women's 500 metres competition in Dresden. So don't go too far away. Much more to come from this World Cover Short Track Speed Skating.
On the action goes in Dresden at this ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. You're watching the women's 500 meters semi-final stage. Two great races to bring you. And we will discover who it is that advances into the final. The top two skaters from each race and then possibly one of the fastest third place athletes will go in or one of the third place athletes will go in. That all depends on uh, other factors such as advancements. Semi-final number one, the women's 500 meters in Dresden. Two great Dutch athletes here in the form of Michelle Velzebo and Selma Poutsma, young athletes, but uh, positively veterans by the standard of Sohui Min and Chiara Betty of Korea Republic in Italy, respectively, who are 21. The oldest in the race is Park Jiwon, who is 26. And there is young Chiara Betty. Michelle Velzebot, whose father, Mark, and her aunts, Monique and Simone, competed at the Albaville Games in 1992. The first semi-final in the women's competition, the 500 meters, big, big start demonstrated by Selma Poutsma of The Hague who is second in the overall 500 meter standings at the moment. Absolutely flying through this race. Well, Paltzman now has uh, gone. We'll come back to that in just a moment because uh, we have uh, Park Gion in the lead. Michelle Velzebor in second position. And it is going to be Park and uh, Velzebor. And they go through into the final. Chiara Betty has to hope that that's going to be a good enough time. Just look back at this uh, start again. Oh, Poutsma. Extraordinary, having attacked the start so aggressively. Exiting the race. She really did absolutely fly through the first portion of the race. Poutsma, but it didn't last. So Park Gion and Michelle Velzebor are the two who have automatically earn their spot in the semi-final stage. So he Min is definitely into the B final. We wait to see what the case is for Poutsma. Second semi-final coming up for the women in the 500 meters. Sandra Velzebor, the leader in the 500 meters at World Cup level this season. This is going to be a really interesting one because uh, Wang Ye has gone out hard at the start to try to take control of this from Cassandra Velzebor. Bold move by the 18-year-old Chinese skater. Exciting work from this young athlete. Camila Stomowska sits in third place behind Cassandra Velzebor. And now the switch has come. Velzebor going into the lead ahead of Wong. The two Canadians are fourth and fifth respectively to the bell. Velzebor ahead of Wang Ye. Is there going to be a change to this from Stormovska? Stormovska is going to take third place. 
behind Wong, who in turn is behind Velzebor. So the young Chinese athlete who took the bronze in Beijing and Seoul has gone into the final, along with Cassandra Velzebor, the 500 meters leader this season. Elzebor, Wong and Stormovska into the final. She did enough, the pole. Buta and Sting are into the B final. So those are your qualifiers. The A final, all the way down to and including Stormovska. Next up, the men's 500 semi-finals. Miss Nikisha of Kazakhstan goes in this first semi-final of the men's 500 meters. Marcus Howard of the USA, who was impressive in the quarter-final stage. We've got Felix Roussel, Quentin Furcock, and Tuan Bohr as well. And Dennis Nikisha, bronze medalist at the Seoul World Cup. Dennis Nikisha with a purposeful beginning. Howard doing well too. At the start of this, the men's 500 meters semi-final number one. Nikisha out in front where he likes to operate, just to take control of this race. Let the rest of the pack worry about what they've got to do behind. Roussel is in third place. Sabor fourth and Quentin Furcock fifth. Might get a change coming here. Well, that was bold from Roussel. That's surely going to be reviewed. He might have cut off Howard there. Anyway, Nikisha wins it for the moment. Roussel is in second place. Boer is in third. But there is going to be a video review. Very well done, Dennis Nikisha. I said that he, he likes to avoid any of the jostling behind. We did get a bit of jostling behind. And you wonder how secure Felix Roussel's station is in this race. Officials are scrutinizing. It obviously is uh, this uh, Roussel and Howard coming together. And one imagines we're going to get some adjustments made here. Or is it too... Uh, too tight. Anxious wait this for all and sundry. The outcome is there is no change to proceeding. So Roussel is safe, he's okay. Joins for or rather joins Nikisha, I should say, in the uh, final bore, is the gentleman who's waiting. Real relief there for the Canadians. And this is the last semi-final. It's 
Dane De Smet. The reigning champion of Europe at uh, double the distance. But he has been a medalist at the World Championships in 500. He's on the inside. Andrew Ho of Pennsylvania in the United States of America. We're in 65. So Yira. Beginning from Stein Desmet was strong. Likewise, Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada, who's tucked in behind him. Andrew Ho of the United States of America in third place. So what will we see from So Yira? The bronze medalist in this, uh, or rather double the uh, distance at uh, Pyeongchang in his home Olympic Games in 2018 and a world champion at 1,000 metres. He's in fourth position, but now looking to make that move up. He's done well to push into third. So, oh, there was problematic uh, movement there for Jordan Pierre Gilles, who's gone. Will that get reviewed? Almost certainly. Meanwhile, it allows uh, Andrew Ho and then Wukash Kuszynski to take first and second with Desmet in third place. But there is much to scrutinize. Nothing to be confirmed at the moment. Jordan Pierre Gilles was uh, in a difficult position. There. What uh, impact did Andrew Ho have, if any? And also Stein Desmet involved in that too. Andrew Ho is at the centre of it all. He was the bronze medalist in this event at the Four Continents Championships earlier in the season. So, does the move come from Jordan Pierre Gilles? movement by him most interesting the young Olympian watches and waits While the competitors in the 1,000 metres for women are waiting to take to the ice. Is this Andrew Ho who's potentially at fault? It's taking some time for the officials to review it and that's... All well and good, it needs to take as long as it needs to take. Great entertainment, isn't it, for all ages, for the whole family to come and watch short track speed skating. There's nothing quite like it in person when you're there. I've had the uh, privilege to commentate this great sport at the Olympic Winter Games and there is something quite majestic about seeing the uh, pace that these athletes get up to when it's right in front of you, when you're right down there at uh, the level of the rink. It's extraordinary how much space everyone seems to have when they are being viewed from a distance. Oh, Andrew Ho has gone. He's been penalised. Jordan Pierre Gilles has been advanced. Wukash Krasinski and Stein Desmet also going through. 
it's a push, isn't it, from uh, Andrew Ho that's the verdict on Jordan Pierre Gilles. So the young man is out of contention. Now it will be the women's 1,000 metres semi-finals. Two races to bring you. And we look at Kim Gilly in this race. Dreaming of the Crystal Globe. But what a field, what a field. An action-packed and star-studded women's 1,000 metres semi-final at the Dresden World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. Kristen Santos Griswold and Shim suk -hee are out in front early on. We have Danae Blay of Canada wearing 13. Number four is Kim Gilly. And she has moved to the front of the pack. Park ji Young, the third athlete from the Republic of Korea, is at the back at the moment. In this field, we will have only one potential third place athlete going through. So it is the top two who are the safe ones as standard. Santos Griswold now moving through beyond Blake to take the lead. The brilliant, experienced American now just trying to open up a little gap. Blair doing well, but now two athletes from Korea Republic to hold off, and this is where it could get difficult. Kim trying to get round Blay. Blay's doing everything she can to defend this position, but Kim has taken it. So Kim Gilly moves into second place, moves into the final with Christian Santos Griswold. And it was close on the line between Blay and Park Ji Young. Shim Saki finishing in fifth position. Let's have a look back at the action. Kristen Santos, Griswold and Kim Gilly automatically into the final. Danae Blay waits to see if her time will be sufficient because we have a second semi-final to come. Hannah Desmet, Susanna Schulting in this race along with Claudia Gagnon, Corinne Stoddard and Zhang Jianning. Hasn't Zhang done fantastically to get to this stage? If she can make it into the final, it's going to be a wonderful accomplishment for the youngster with all that experience out there. It's going to be Desmet on the inside with Schulting returning to World Cup competition next to her. Here we go. Anna Desmet, who's having a very fine weekend, takes the early advantage, but uh, wanting to impose herself is Corinne Stoddard of the United States of America in this second semi-final of the women's 1,000 metres. We will expect something bold from the young Chinese skater Zhang Jianning, who's currently in fourth place. Claudia Gagnon, the 25-year-old Canadian, who's yet to pick up any honours in Dresden in individual competition moves close to the front of the pack but it's Stoddard now with Schulting in second
Desmet, happy to bide her time with a few laps remaining. Fascinating tactics in a 1,000 metres. Chang is trailing by quite some way now. Here we go with Desmet's move. That's very fine from Hannah Desmet, right up there. Tucks alongside, Schulting goes into the lead. Brilliant, just brilliant from Desmet. Schulting takes second place, Stoddard in third. What quality that was. Brilliant decision making from Hannah Desmet ahead of Susanna Schulting. And we also have Corinne Stoddard joining them in the final, the A final, as a result of her performance. Stoddard, the third place finisher who joins the rest of them into the A final. And from Blay onwards, that's the lineup of the B final. The men's 1,000 metres semi-finals. And we have Park Gion in this race. The reigning champion of the world and the man closing in on the Crystal Globe. It is the semi-final stage. The men's 1,000 metres. Mark Gion ahead of Jordan Pierre Gilles with Luca Spechenhauser of Germany in third place. Pietro Siegel is fourth. Lewinsky of Poland in fifth position. Beckenhauser now taking a leading position for the time being. Mark Gion. Oh, there was a little loss of uh, footwork there from uh, Jordan Pierre Gilles. Very problematic that for uh, Pierre Gilles. It allows uh, Dongenu to uh, come through and to uh, take second place there. Apologies to the uh, graphics not being uh, completely accurate because we had uh, completely the, the wrong uh, lineup of athletes. Uh, listed it was in fact uh, Park ahead of uh, William Dongenu so uh, we'll just uh, look back at this again Park Gion with uh, Itzhak Delat 
Robert Skrusberg, Sir William Dongenu and Luca Speckenhauser. The uh, actual entrance listed. And that was the moment where Dongenu nearly uh, lost his footing. I say when the uh, list of names uh, appeared there I thought has there been a redraw because uh, it did look rather different from the uh, prescribed list of uh, competitors for this semi-final but anyway it's all immaterial because we have clarity more race to come in the men's 1,000 metres. Now we have confirmation of the win for Park G1. William Dongenou in second place and Robert Krusbergs third. I'm waiting to see if that will be good enough to go into the A final. Semi-final number two in the men's 1,000 metres. Dan Koss has had a really good competition so far. Minus number 184. We also have Stephen Dubois, Fruso Emmons, Jiang Sung-woo and Adil Galiakmatov. <laughs> Semi-final number two, the men's 1,000 metre race at the Dresden World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. Stephen Dubois, second in the 1,000 metres standings, leads the way, but uh, Koss switches with him. Through so Emmons jostling around and getting into third, but not for long. Kelly Akhmetov uh, responds quickly. Emmons now in second place. Dubois right back into uh, last place. Good position this for the Dutch. One and two, ideal. They can just get the door locked now, then that will be advancement for the pair of them into the final. It's just a question of whether they can do it. Gali Akhmetov is the one leading the uh, chasing pack for the moment. And we're coming to the business end of the race. What move will we see from Dubois? He's trying to get around as is Jang sung -woo, but it's Gali Akhmetov who's managed to intercede. But here comes Jang sung -woo, and that's very close on the line. Koss taking it. Gali Akhmetov looks as though he's got second. Dubois raced out of it. And Fruso Emmons not able to hold on in the end, but that great position the Dutch managed to get into with the top two. Yielding one automatic spot in the final, and it's the youngster Dan Koss again. Isn't he having a great competition? Super performance from Dan Koss. Waiting for the uh, confirmed results. And the absence of uh, Dubois, all very good news when it comes to the A final for Park Gion and his prospects of retaining that uh, Crystal Globe title.
Dubois goes to the B final along with Friso Amens. Zhang sung is the fastest third place finisher. He joins Kos and Galiakmetov from this semi-final going into the A final. your qualifiers for the A and B finals respectively from Park Fuda Jang into the A final. Kruisbergs down to uh, Dubois will contest the B final. And we will return to bring you the first finals of the day and the last finals of this weekend of World Cup competition in a short while. Action set to resume in just over 15 minutes time in Dresden at the Joy Next Arena. And we've got lots to come. The women's 500 meters finals, the first of the concluding stages in this last day of competition in Dresden after the 500 for women will bring the 500 for men and then the women's and men's 1000 meters as all of the events for individuals conclude and we finish with the relays to round off the weekend more to come soon
Welcome to the Joy Next Arena in Dresden and the start of finals action on this, the last day of competition at the ISU World Cup of Short Track Speed Skating. The B final in the women's 500 meters is the first item on the agenda. These are the contenders to take the B final title. We have Kim Buta and Rene Singh of Canada, Chiara Betty from Italy, Sohi Min of the Republic of Korea, and Selma Paltzma of the Netherlands. Boutin of Canada, four-time Olympic Winter Games medalist, including the bronze medal in this event in Beijing. Rene Steng of Canada, the graduate of civil engineering from McGill University and a world championship relay medalist. Chiara Betty of Italy, a young athlete who's really impressing of late. She's only 21. Great future in the sport, that is clear. So Hui Min of the Republic of Korea, seventh in the Crystal Globe rankings. An Olympic medalist and a world champion in relay competition. Selma Paltzma of the Netherlands. Second in the 500 meters standing, sixth in the Crystal Globe overall rankings. Bronze medalist Poutsma at the World Championships last year. The B final, the women's 500 meters. Very good beginning from the two Canadians. They've controlled this early on, Boutin and Sting. Now trying to intercede is Poutsma, and that has created some problems for Renee Stinger of Canada because she's dropped well back. Bhutan nonetheless still in the lead. It gives a chance now for Chiara Betty, the Italian, to come forward and challenge as well. But this is very fine from Poutsma. Can she now take Bhutan in this final lap, or will the veteran Canadian manage to hold on? We find out as they turn the corner Kim Boutin takes it. She wins the V-final. Selma Poutsma finishes second, and Chiara Betty holds on for third position ahead of So Hui Min. They got into a great position early on, the two Canadians. And you feel, don't you, for the 25-year-old uh, from Ontario, Renee uh, Stinger, who just uh, slipped away. Bhutan with the victory in the B final. Kim Bhutan, the winner in the B final. You never know, sometimes strange things happen in A finals and the B final winner ends up on the podium. It has happened even at uh, Olympic Winter Games level. Now to the women's 500 meters A final at Dresden's Joy Next Arena. Globe standings so far. We're about to see Cassandra Velzebor in this race. She was third in the overall standings coming into the weekend. Anna Desmet has moved up courtesy of her brilliant performance in the 1500 meters.
this is how we've got to the stage we're at now, the final. The path through for all of these athletes, beautifully illustrated. But all that was is of no consequence. Now, it doesn't matter how you got there, you're there. You've made it into a World Cup final. Now, go out and win it. Cassandra Velzebor, who specializes in victory. The 22-year-old, this youngster who's already an Olympic Winter Games champion. The leader in 500 meters competition at World Cup level this season. She's joined by Wang Ye of the People's Republic of China. Sometimes known as Evelyn to her friends. She's from Beijing and she already has won two bronze medals this season in 500 meters competition. Kamila Stomowska of Poland, 23. Part of the mixed relay team that made it onto the podium at our home European Championships in the great city of Gdansk earlier in the year. Park Gion, 26 last month. Silver medalist in this event at the Four Continents Championships earlier in the season. And the other Velzebor sister, the younger one, Michelle, who won a gold medal at the Dresden World Cup last season, and who is a European and world champion in the relays. What an excellent final it's poised to be. Cassandra Velzebor is looking to pick up yet another victory in 500 meters competition. She has three wins this season, one of them joint. And she will be on the inside with the brilliant youngster Wang Ye next to her. The women's 500 meters final in the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. And what a start it's been from Cassandra Velzebor, the leader in World Cup competition over this distance. Behind her, but some way behind her, is Wang Ye, the brilliant teenager who's stunned with some of her performances this season. Those two are well ahead of the chasing pack led by Park Jion. Now Stormovskis moved into the bronze medal position, but uh, Velzebor moving extraordinarily. This is brilliant from Cassandra Velzebor and brilliant from Wang Ye. It's going to be a fantastic and commanding win for Velzebor. Wang taking the silver medal and Stormovska of Poland will join those two on the podium, but it's Cassandra Velzebor with a fourth win this season in 500 meters competition. And she puts her arm around her younger sister, Michelle. Brilliant performance as ever from this young great in the sport. You've got to admire the start. And well done to Wang Ye because she was under a little bit of uh, pressure in that second uh, position inside. Really fought her way through the pack to uh, hold firm and be as close to Velzebor as possible. Confirmation of the finalists turning into medalists. Cassandra Velzebor over Wang Ye over Camilla Stormovska. Those are your three who'll make it onto the podium in Dresden. And we'll proceed directly to the victory ceremony now.
the victory ceremony for the women's 500 meters competition at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Olaj Kover, the head referee, will present the medals. Kamila Stormowska of Poland wins her second 500 meters medal in World Cup competition after getting onto the podium in Dordrecht several years ago. She is a bronze medalist here in Dresden. She's had so many good experiences in Dresden, set her personal best in the 500 meters at the Dresden World Cup last year. Wang Ye of the People's Republic of China is a real prospect for the future. The 18-year-old has won a silver medal. This is her best performance of the season after bronze medals in Beijing and Seoul. She's getting better and better and better, and she is a joy to watch. She is a, a great musician as well, a great artist. And she is one of the great performers of the season. But it's the same old story, really. You hold a 500 meters race and she wins it because that's what she does. The brilliant Cassandra Velzebor, the reigning two-time champion of the world, also the European champion. She's now won her fourth World Cup title of the season over 500 meters. Gold, gold, golds galore for Cassandra Velzebor. Crystal Globe standings. Kim Gilly looking very secure at the top, and she will be in action later on today. The men's B final in the 500 meters at the Joy Next Arena in Dresden is our next race. And these are the gentlemen who have made it into the B final. Just four of them. Have a look at the contenders. To and Boer, twenty two from the Netherlands double relay champion at the European Championships earlier this year and a world champion to boot. We have Marcus Howard, 20. 
mixed relay champion on two occasions at the Four Continents Championships. Quentin Furcock, Winter Youth Olympic Games gold medalist, World Championship silver medalist over this distance. And joining them is So Yira, the oldest and most experienced of the field, 31, and a medalist at the Olympic Winter Games. The men's B final in the 500 meters competition at the Dresden World Cup, and it is Howard of the USA who leads early on. Quentin Furcock is in second place, or he was for a moment because Truen Bohr has now gone back into the number two spot, but Howard is leading this, or he was leading this, and that has created big problems for just about everyone except Quentin Furcock, who now seems to have this one sewn up. Howard went went into Boer, Quentin Furcock will win the B final. Tuan Boer finishes second, Soyira back in third place and uh, the youngster Marcus Howard started so fantastically and then sadly it all went wrong for him. Confirmation of that win. Quentin Furcock, the uh, beneficiary when things started to go astray for Marcus Howard, who ultimately, after a great start, finishes right down the order. To the men's A final in the 500 metres competition at Dresden's Joy Next Arena, who will take the World Cup title in Germany. Crystal Globe standings. We have Stein Desmet in this race. He's the eighth position in the standings. Jordan Pierre Gilles, one above him. He's also in this race too. Let's remind ourselves of how the five finalists got to this stage. Jordan Pierre Gilles here, courtesy of an advancement. Denis Nikisha, 28 from Kazakhstan, hugely experienced, four times a medalist at the Winter World University Games, including over 500 metres. He has been on the verge of a place on the podium at World Championship level two. He was fourth in the 500 metres at the 2022-2023 World Championships. Felix Roussel of Canada, four times a World Cup champion, all in relay competition. The young man from Quebec who's a university student. Łukasz Kuczynski of Poland, 24, one of the team that was the first to win a European Championship medal for Poland in men's competition. 
He's now won three medals at European Championship level. Stain Desmet, eighth in the Crystal Globe rankings. The athlete who was a bronze medalist over 500 metres at the 2022 World Championships. Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada, the 500 metres leader this season. Winner in Montreal, twice in Beijing, in the final courtesy of an advancement in the semi final stage. Whenever he's here, he's a threat to win it, but he's got to do it from a slightly difficult starting position. Jordan Pierre Gilles will be on the outside. Denis Nikisha, based on what we've seen here, is the man to beat. He's looked very tidy this weekend. Good luck to them all. A final in the 500 meters at the Dresden World Cup. Great start from Dennis Nikisha. It's going to have to be great to deal with the challenges behind him. Roussel of Canada is second. Łukasz Kuszynski of Poland in third. But what of Jordan Pierre Gilles, who's trying everything he can to get up to an advanced position in this race? But there's a lot of work to do because Nikisha and Roussel are way ahead of the pack. But Jordan Pierre Gilles is the leader in World Cup competition this season. But this is Nikisha at the moment, unless Roussel can take him on the final turn. Roussel might have done it! Oh, goodness! It, I think it's Nikisha just about. Wow, what a finish. Slipping on the line. But hopefully, for his sake, holding on, Denis Nikisha with Roussel in second place and Jordan Pierre Gilles from the outside managing to finish third. Let's look back at it. Draw breath, hold your breath, and gasp at the conclusion. This is great from Nikisha to seize control, but he very nearly lost it at the end. That's how close it was. Just waiting for confirmation. Was everything all okay at the end of that race. I just wonder about Nikisha as he actually goes to ground at the end. Look at the arm coming out. Now then. Now then, now then. That is quite interesting. What does this mean for Felix Roussel? Was he impeded? Dennis Nikisha going in search of what would be a huge gold medal for him. And it would as well for Felix Roussel. Well, he's got it, he's got it. I think they're going to probably give that for the use of the arm. But we'll wait for confirmation. Oh, Dennis Nikisha. It looks as though he's been denied. And we await official confirmation, but the celebrations have started in the Joy Next Arena for Felix Roussel. There we go, Dennis Nikisha has been penalised. 
We'll wait for the exact reason, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's for the use of the arm. Felix Roussel is your champion in Dresden. Jordan Pierre Gilles takes second place. Yes, it is an arm block confirmed by Nikisha. It was hard to tell in the immediate finish, but the moment the replay started, I suspect you watching at home were thinking, well, I, this is fairly cut and dried. And you have got to sympathize with Dennis Nikisha. Poor chap, he was so close to that win. But well done to the youngster, Felix Roussel. bring you the victory ceremony now congratulations as well to uh, Lukasz Kuczynski on his first World Cup honours Peter Worth, the assistant referee, doing the honours. Łukasz Kuczynski of Poland, bronze medalist. He's on a World Cup podium for the first time. He's been a trailblazer in this sport, the young man. History maker with the Polish team at European Championship level. This is a special one for Łukasz Kuczynski. Congratulations. Well deserved. Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada, despite starting from the outside position, having been advanced to the final, has managed to take silver. His credentials continue to grow and uh, he proves himself to be one of the very best out there at the moment. Felix Roussel of Canada has managed to secure himself a World Cup title. His teammate Jordan Pierre Gilles beams and cheers with him. That is great camaraderie. And there is your gold medalist in Dresden. A dramatic finish. And he was impeded on the line by Denis Nikisha of Kazakhstan. And as a result, he is confirmed as the gold medalist. What a proud moment for Sherbrooke in Quebec as two of their own are on the podium. Jordan Piagil in fifth place in the Crystal Globe standings.
more to come in Dresden. Now the 1,000 metres finals. Firstly, the B final in the women's competition. Excellent work as ever being done by uh, the officials who prepare this immaculate surface. Forensic attention to detail. The B final in the women's 1,000 metres in Dresden. We have uh, Claudia Gagnon of Canada on the inside. On the outside, it's Shinsaki. Canada's Claudia Gagnon. Young Zhang Jianning, 18 from the People's Republic of China, takes her place alongside the uh, much more experienced world championship medalist at junior level, Gagnon. Bene Blay of Canada. Silver medalist in the relay competition at the Montreal World Championships in 2022. Park ji Yun of the Republic of Korea. 1,000 meters bronze medalist in Montreal, the first World Cup of the season, her first ever individual medal in World Cup competition. Shim Suk Hee, twice an Olympic Winter Games champion in the relay. And she was a bronze medalist at this distance in Sochi in 2014. The women's 1,000 metres B final in Dresden. And early on, it's the young athlete from the People's Republic of China who gets to the front of the pack. Zhang Jianning with the two from Korea Republic behind, but now interceding Danae Blay goes into third. But here comes the first big bold move from the outside. It's Claudia Gagnon. And that allows for quite a change. Gagnon play either side of Zhang Jianning. Six laps remaining. Gagnon, the biology graduate, is now right up there with Blay. Good position this for the Canadians. They've got tactical control, or have they? Or have they? Because Park is making the move, had to be aggressive around the outside. This is brilliant. Oh, what a race there from Park. What a line, what judgment. And now it's going to be Career Republic to seize this one. Such entertainment. Shinsaki joins Park, but that was one of the moves of this weekend of racing in Dresden from Park ji -yun. and as a result of that, it's Korea Republic one and two in the B final. Park ji -yun with really a majestic moment in this race. Because the Canadians seemed to have the lead locked down. give a racer like Park ji Yun a little space and it will be taken. That was just fabulous. And the great supporting work done by Shin Suk Hee as well. So quickly this became career Republic in control. Very enjoyable B final that. Park Ji-Yun 
and her teammate Shimsaki taking the race away from the Canadians in the B final of the women's 1000 meters. Consider that the appetizer for this blockbuster final. We have helmet numbers one, three, four, five, and 10 in this race. This is an absolutely superb field of highly consistent performers. These are the standings when it comes to winning the Crystal Globe. And we're about to see the top two, Kim Gilly and Kristen Santos Griswold, go up against each other. The path to the final. Stoddard in as uh, the fastest third place finisher. Hannah Desmet, fourth in the Crystal Globe standings. Great performer. Her 1500 meters win, a real highlight of the weekend. Susanna Schulting is back. She returns to World Cup competition. And what a pleasure it is to witness her at these events once more after injury earlier in the season. Corinne Stoddard of the United States of America. Been a great performer at 1,000 and 1,500 this season in World Cup competition. Kristen Santos Griswold, second in the Crystal Globe rankings. Two 1,000 meters wins this season. She was beaten yesterday in the first set of 1,000 meters races by this athlete, the top performer, Kim Gilly. Lamborghini, as they call her. The gold medalist at the World Junior Championships in Dresden last year. Kim Gilly is going to have a lot of work on if she's going to manage to take this uh, title because she starts not from a position of enormous advantage. It's Desmet on the inside. What a lineup. Schulting, Desmet, Kim, Santos Griswold, Stoddard. It's a super group of skaters. This is going to be fascinating, the women's 1,000 meter final on the last day of competition in Dresden. Hannah Desmet moves into the early lead with Susanna Schulting right behind her. The two-time champion over this distance at the Olympic Winter Games. The Dutch athlete is ahead of Kristen Santos Griswold. And then you have Kim Gilly, the World Cup leader, the Crystal Globe favorite. She likes to wait to see the lay of the land, Kim. She's perfectly secure being in this kind of position. As she said yesterday, I wait for the others to exhaust themselves, to wear themselves out, then I go for it. Santos Griswold ahead now, Schulting second, Desmet third. But we keep an eye on Kim Gilly. Still, it is the American who's just about ahead. It's tight. Oh, there's chaos. There's chaos. 
Santos Griswold is down. Santos Griswold is down. Kim Gilly leads. Shorting might capitalize. Which of the two will it be? It's Kim Gilly again. Shorting takes second. Stoddard is third. The Lamborghini's engine does not fail her. So often, her judgment is brilliant. A master tactician. And she may well be holding a crystal globe very soon. But we are obviously going to have to have a video review. So do not count chickens before they've hatched. Let's relive a fascinating race. And look at this moment when Kristen Santos Griswold went out of contention. Well, was there activity from Hannah Desmet? Stoddard only just, only just finishing third. She got so close to Schulting. And look at that moment, capturing the fists in the air of Kim Gilly. Her celebration reaction times in tune with the photo finish reaction times. But what of Hannah Desmet and Kristen Santos Griswold? Watch and they wait. No confirmed results yet. They've had a wonderful time, the Korea Republic fans. Hannah Desmet has been penalized. No change to the uh, top three though, Kim Gilly. Susanna Schulting and Corinne Stoddard. You have to feel, though, don't you, for Santos Griswold. An illegal late pass from Desmet. Clearly does send Santos Griswold hurtling to the ground. And now we move to the victory ceremony Michelle, the uh, assistant referee, presenting the uh, medals. Corin Stoddard of the United States of America, bronze medalist, second time on the podium in 1,000 metres competition at World Cup level this season. She's also been on the 1500 meters podium more than once. Getting very used to seeing the skater from Seattle in the top three in a World Cup event. She returns and she is on the podium. Susanna Schulting of the Netherlands, the champion 
and Crystal Globe winner last season. An injury disrupted campaign this time, but it's great to have her back. Kim Gilly of the Republic of Korea is the standout performer when it comes to the Crystal Globe this season. And she's won back-to-back 1,000 metres titles in Dresden. Just remarkable. She's only 19. And in the setting of her great junior triumph, where she won three gold medals in Dresden, at the World Junior Championships last year. She continues to remind us that she is quite some senior. She actually wanted to be a figure skater following in the footsteps of the great Kim Yuna. But uh, there were no classes being offered. Well, she's in a class of her own now at the top of the Crystal Globe standings. First to four figures, Kim Gilly. And that difficult finish for Kristen Santos Griswold, making things all the more comfortable for Kim. to the men's 1,000 metres B final. This is the last individual category for us to enjoy in Dresden before the women's 3,000 metres and men's 5,000 metres relay finals. So four races left in total. Friso Eamon, Stephen Dubois, Roberts Kruisbergs, Lukas Speckenhauser and Itzhak Delat are your five in this B final. A surprise for Dubois to be in this position. And a great chance for Park Gion in the next race to extend his lead at the top of the Crystal Globe standings. Let's have a look at the five. So Emmons of the Netherlands, 25-year-old, will go on the inside. He was fourth in the 1500 metres in Dresden last year. Stephen Dubois of Canada from Quebec, the brilliant performer in World Cup competition this season, having to settle for the B final now, along with Robert Kuzbergs of Latvia, silver medalist in this event in Dresden last year. Luca Spechenhauser of Italy, 23 from mountainous Lombardy, still a, a very good skier. He actually started in cross-country skiing before becoming a, a speed skater, despite the fact his father was a coach in the sport. And we have Itzhak Delat, who has competed at the Olympic Winter Games and who has been a world champion several times in relay competition. We begin the men's 1,000 metres B final. Not the strongest of beginnings for Kruisbergs. And it is Itzhak Delat with 
Speckenhauser close to him early on. Speckenhauser will move round into a leading position. And the Canadian, Stephen Dubois, is in third place. Then Amons and then the aforementioned Grisbergs. Dutch and that's uh, forced a response from Dubois and what a response it is from Dubois and from Chris Bergs. Very neatly done, the two of them had to expend a lot of energy to do that and they've now pushed the pace with a few laps to go. Dubois with Chris Bergs right over his shoulder. They're very close to each other. Speckenhauser is now bringing up the peloton. Dubois Looks as though he's just about going to take this over. Kruisbergs does so on the line. And it's Amons, I think, who gets third place ahead of his own teammate. It's Agdalat by really a matter of thousands. Stephen Dubois. Great finish to the race from him and from Kruisbergs. They pulled away at just the right time. Stephen Dubois with the win in the B final of the men's 1,000 metres in Dresden. <laughs> to the men's A final in the 1,000 metres competition at the Joy Next Arena in Dresden and this ISU Short Track Speed Skating World Cup competition. Mark Gion at the top of the Crystal Globe standings, just ahead of Stephen Dubois, but poised to extend that lead. What can William Dongenou do to enhance his own credentials and help his teammate out. Dubois, Dubois' presence in the B final really helpful for Park as he goes in pursuit of his second consecutive Crystal Globe. Dan Koss, 21, only just 21 from the Netherlands, who has competed at the World Junior Championships. He's starting to establish himself as a senior and looking very good in his first time at the Dresden World Cup. Adil Galiachmetov, the first short track skater from Kazakhstan to get on a World Cup podium in the 1500 meters, is here now going for 1000 meters glory. Zhang sung 21 from Daegu in the Republic of Korea. His first time in Dresden, he's an undergraduate at Korea University and is a world junior champion in relay competition. Park ji on the winner of last year's Crystal Globe. And William Donginu 
third in the Crystal Globe standings. He will go on the inside. Can Park ji extend his lead at the top of the Crystal Globe rankings with Stephen Dubois having been relegated to victory in the B final. It's Park's chance to create a bit of daylight. But could Dan Koss change all of that? Produces a prize win. Will we see Jang Sung U? on the podium. Will it be Gali Akhmetov or will it be William Donginou? The men's 1,000 metres A final in Dresden at this World Cup event. Dan Koss goes into an early lead. At the back, Park Jiwon but at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to winning the Crystal Globe. And he could really enhance his position at the top of the standings if he gets a win here. But at the moment, it's the tall Canadian, William Dungenou, who is in the lead. Jang sung third behind. Koss! Koss gone. Dungenou having to recover position. Video review will undoubtedly take place there. And all of that has put Jang sung -woo into the lead. Dong jin -woo's done incredibly to stay on his feet and to be in second place. Gali Akhmetov third. Park waiting to time his move, waiting to judge it. Dong jin -woo's down as well now. Oh, my goodness. Is everything being set up for Park ji -won? to take another Crystal Globe. Here he goes. At the bell, Park ji -won moves into a leading position. He said one Crystal Globe isn't enough. I have two hands. I want two of them. And he may well be grasping a second one very soon indeed. He's won again, Park ji -won. Zhang finishing second, Gali Akhmetov third, but some activity to be scrutinized by the refereeing team. Donjinou seemed to be in quite a good position for much of this, despite that uh, contretemps with Dan Koss. Bump there almost with uh, Gali Akhmetov, and then he loses his footing, Donjinou, and hurtles into the boards. A path was cleared for Park. And he's not a man who misses a chance. The reigning champion of the world. The absolute finest. Two hands, two crystal globes, that's the dream. Corbett has much to look at. That's interesting, isn't it? The outstretched arm potentially there of Koss. Included their conversation. Doesn't look as though there was enough for them to uh, take any further action. The man of the moment of many, many, many moments, to be frank. 
Mark Jion, the victor over Jang Sangu, Adil Galiachmetov taking the bronze medal. And we'll bring you the victory ceremony now for the men's 1,000 metres competition. The victory ceremony for the men's 1,000 metres competition on this final day of short track speed skating at the World Cup in Dresden, Germany. Olaj Gover, chief referee, presenting the medals. Adil Galiachmetov of Kazakhstan, bronze medalist. More honours at World Cup level for him. History maker for Kazakhstan in terms of his World Cup accomplishments and also a two-time medalist at the Lake Placid World Winter University Games. From the Republic of Korea, Jang Sung Woo is the silver medalist. This young athlete capitalizing on a tricky situation to hold his nerve and get his place on a World Cup podium. First time in Dresden, happy memories for Jang Sung Woo. Park Jion of the Republic of Korea is the champion. Where others had difficulties, he capitalized. One of those great strategists in races. He knows when to make his move, when to bide his time. And it usually results in gold. The reigning champion of the world, the reigning Crystal Globe champion. And he's got closer to getting his hands on a second trophy. Those are your medalists in the men's 1,000 metres in Dresden. And look at what that's done to the top of the table, Park Jiwon is so much more authoritatively ahead than he was moments ago over Stephen Dubois and William Dongenou. It's almost his now. The coronation is impending. We will return in just under 15 minutes time for the relay final for the women, the 3,000 metre competition.
The setting is the Joy Next Arena in Dresden, and this is the penultimate race of our World Cup weekend. The 3,000 metre relay competition for women. And there will be four teams contesting this final. 27 laps of the track. Netherlands are right at the top of the Crystal Globe, or the rather the World Cup rankings, I should say, for the 3,000 meter relay. They have won three out of four. It's just Montreal that was won by the Canadians. Korea Republic have been close throughout. United States of America fourth in the rankings. They were the bronze medalists in the second Montreal World Cup at the start of the year. We have all of the top four in the World Cup rankings in this final, so it's gone true to form and true to type. Will we get any upsets? Canadians third in the rankings with 280 points to the 218 of the USA they won Montreal at the start of the season that's their only time on the podium but they've been consistent uh, finalists now to the Netherlands the World Cup leaders they didn't win Montreal at the start of the season but Every one since has been theirs. Can they make it four in a row in Dresden? What a race it's poised to be. And the second place team in the World Cup rankings, Korea Republic. They have been second in three of the four. Can they get that elusive title here in Dresden? They're 70 points behind the Netherlands. The USA, Canada, the Netherlands and the Republic of Korea in this 3,000 metre women's relay competition in Dresden. The final is upon us. watching the women's 3000 meter relay final at the World Cup of short track speed skating in Dresden and the Netherlands are the leaders across the season they've been absolutely fantastic the Dutch winning three out of four races only Montreal at the start of the season was won by someone else that was the host nation Canada they're in this race as well third in the overall standings Korea Republic are here as the second place nation they've been second in three of the four races and the usa were bronze medalists in montreal at the start of the season they are fourth in the world cup rankings 
earlier on, Italy won the B final ahead of China and ahead of Hungary. So for the Dutch, we have Susanna Schulting, Cassandra Velzebor, Yara Van Kerkhoff and Selma Paltzma. For Canada, Courtney Soro, Kim Boutin, Danae Vlay and Claudia Gagnon. For the Republic of Korea, Kim Gilly, Shim Suk Hee, So Hui Min and Lee So Yon. And representing the United States of America, Kristen Santos Griswold, Corinne Stoddard, Julie Letai and Eunice Lee. And here is Yara Van Kerkhoff ahead of Claudia Gagnon. How do you stop the Dutch? A question to which there seems to be no answer in World Cup competition at the moment. Schulting, the returning Schulting, ahead of Kim Boutin. Trying to find and chart a way through. Shim Suk Hee as the changeover is now made to Kim Gilly. What a fantastic season the teenager Kim Gilly is having. It's Cassandra Velzebor who hands back to Yara Van Kerkhoff. No change at the moment. Selma Paltzma and Courtney Saro leading this one for their nations. Soe Min is uh, now just handing back over. Down to single figures in terms of laps remaining in this 27 lap race. The women's 3000 metre relay, here's the move that we expected to see from the Republic of Korea. It is courtesy of Kim Gilly who puts them into second position. They've done really well, Korea Republic, to change the dynamic of this race. Now, what response will we get from the Canadians, from uh, Gagnon at the moment? 25 is Lee so Yon for Korea Republic as the changes are made. Soro looking to uh, try to get round, but uh, no route given by Seoul Hee Min. Houtsma to Schulting. Netherlands out in front, but not by a huge distance. Korea Republic giving a really good go to try to take this. Shin Saki has put Kim Gilly in a good position, and Kim Gilly doesn't need too much help from anyone else. Last couple of laps. Velzebor knows that the challenge is going to come from Kim Gilly. Now, Kristen Santos Griswold looking to make the move round, and as a result of that, Korea Republic are gone right at the end. So it's the Netherlands to win it, that's no surprise. Canada taking second place, and there was uh, contact between Korea Republic and the United States of America. Kristen Santos Griswold was trying to get the USA higher up the standings, and as a result, we've got a video review, and as a result, we've got Korea Republic who. Uh, might have seen that get whisked away from them in terms of a second place finish. All immaterial to the Dutch, four in a row now in World Cup competition. Let's look at how the race was run and how the race was won. Video review ongoing. Did Santos uh, Griswold catch Kim Gilly? Dutch domination in Dresden again.
So there is no change to the standings. The Netherlands with the victory. Canada in second place. The United States of America third. And Korea Republic fourth. Move straight to the victory ceremony for the women's 3,000 meter relay competition. now time for the victory ceremony for the women's 3000 meters relay competition at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. Olaj Kovar and uh, Peter Wirth, part of the refereeing team, will award the medals. Bronze medalists, the United States of America. Kristen Santos Griswold, Corinne Stoddard, Julie Ledtai, and Eunice Lee. The four strong squad brought to Dresden. Bronze medal to the United States of America, their second of the season. For Canada. It is the silver medal. This is a great uh, development in their season after they won Montreal at the beginning of the year. Courtney Serro, Kim Boutin, Tene Blay, Claudia Gagnon and Renee Stinger who raced earlier on in the competition. Silver medalists, Canada. The Dutch are the champions again. And there is no surprise to it. Four out of five World Cup races won when it comes to the 3,000 metre final. Their team, Susanna Schulting, Cassandra Velzebor, Yara van Kirchhoff, Selma Poutsma in this final and also racing for them earlier on in the competition, Michelle Velzebor and Dida van Urschot.
gold to the Netherlands. They extend their lead at the top of the World Cup standings. The medalists in the 3,000 metre relay for women at the Dresden World Cup of short track speed skating. There we have it, the Netherlands now 100 points ahead of Canada. Absolutely fantastic season for them. Uncatchable, untouchable. All other superlatives apply. We come to the last race in our coverage from the Joy Next Arena in Dresden at this weekend of World Cup short track speed skating. The men's 5,000 meter relay competition is to conclude. And this is very interesting because we only have one of the top five actually in this final. That is the Republic of Korea. All of that could be very, very good news for them indeed. Poland advanced to the final. And they join the other four. United States of America. <laughs> we have Japan who are sixth in the World Cup ranking, so a chance for them to push up a little here. Republic third in the standings on 280 points but as I mentioned earlier the uh, two nations below them are not here the two nations above them are not here they didn't make the final just Korea Republic then of the top five Hungary 11th in World Cup rankings what a great chance this is for them to make a move into the top 10 perhaps beyond those lower positions. And that leaves the 10th place nation, Poland. It's open, this is up for grabs.
the men's 5,000 meter relay final in Dresden at the World Cup of short track speed skating. And just one of the top five World Cup nations this season is actually in the race. That's the Republic of Korea. all others there is a glorious chance to get onto a world cup podium no china no canada the dutch the belgians not here these are the five that have made it now what you're watching the men's 5,000 meter relay final in short track speed skating at the Dresden World Cup, the penultimate World Cup competition of the season. We have a curious picture here compared to the women's 3,000 meter relay where it was all of the top four that made it into that four strong final. Here we only have one of the top five in this five strong final and that is Korea Republic. China and Canada did not make it to the final. Belgium and Netherlands did not make it to the final. The first, second, fourth and fifth nations absent from this particular field. It gives third place Korea Republic a brilliant chance to get closer to the top of the standings. And it also provides an opportunity here for the likes of the rest of them to challenge for World Cup honors. 45 laps of the track. Korea Republic entering Park Jiwon, Kim Tae-sung, Jang Sung-woo and Kim Gun-woo. The United States of America with Andrew Ho, Daniel Yoon, Wesley Park, Marcus Howard. For Hungary, Bolaj Bontovic, Daniel Tibors, Mark Gizmadia and Peter Yazapati. Japan have a Miyata Shogo, Yoshinaga Kazuki, Hayashi Kose, and Watanabe Keita. And for Poland, their squad today is Diany Selye, Łukasz Kuszynski, Michał Niewinski, and Felix Pigeon. It wouldn't be a surprise if we get something of a skirmish for those medal places considering how great an opportunity it is and how badly some of these nations will want it all of them will want it and the job really of Korea Republic is to remain clear of all of that to get themselves and they've done it with a very good transition there back into the lead just to allow whatever will be to happen behind them. Twenty-six is Jang Sung Woo. Behind him is Diani Selye. Hungary only brought four athletes uh, with them to this World Cup. Japan also brought Yokoyama Hiroki Korea Republic had in their squad also Wang Dae Hon and Yi Jong Min, Poland Nathan Thomas and Pavel Adamski, and the USA Caleb Park and Jonathan So. All looking nice and comfortable for. Korea Republic with Poland the best of the rest as things stand. Around about halfway through this contest. Just got a little tight there between Japan and Hungary. And it is Japan who've moved into third place with Miyata Shogo handing over. Many of these 
Polish skaters have experienced being on a European Championship podium. Some of them the members of the history-making squad that did it for the first time at continental level. There is uh, Kim Gunu. Good change over to Jang Sungu. Yoshinaga Kazuki moving Japan into second position. Main man leading the way, Park ji on A second individual Crystal Globe beckoning. And now his focus on working for the team. Ten laps remaining of the 45 in this men's 5,000 meter relay competition. And the final stage of it, the video review is going to be uh, utilized. We'll come back to that later. Passing over to Kim Gun-U. Korea Republic ahead of Japan. Now the increase in the pace comes. It's, oh, and we've lost one. We have lost one. The predicted chaos has uh, played out with the United States of America losing their position. And there's going to be another review as a result of that. Meanwhile, Korea Republic ahead of Japan. Korea Republic, the only one of the top five nations in the Men's World Cup to make this final. More reviews are gonna happen. We won't know the defined, confirmed standings for the moment, but look at this attempt by Japan to take it at the end, nearly getting in ahead of Kim Gun, or sorry, Park ji won I should say. Uh, Park ji won has won it. Japan second right at the very end of the race, nearly pressurizing with Hayashi Korsei, Korea Republic. But meanwhile, there's a lot still to unpack and unpick. Several yellow boxes on the screen in the bottom left. But it is exactly what Korea Republic hoped for, a chance for them to eat up some ground on the others in the top five. As for the rest of it, let's look back and see. Celebrations for Korea Republic. Ongoing scrutiny for the officials. Lots to take stock of. So we're now seeing the official video review as seen by the refereeing team.
that's the moment where the United States of America exited any realistic prospect of being on the podium. I think we have clarity and we have confirmation. Poland waiting to see what the verdict is. And they look stunned by what they've seen. Well, we wait official confirmation, but it appears to be bad news for Poland. These are the standings. Poland have incurred a penalty and they're gone. They're out of it. So it means that it's Korea Republic with a win, Japan second, and Hungary have won the bronze medal. Brilliant moment for the Hungarians. Olaj Bontovic, Daniel Tibors, Mark Gismadio, and Peter Yazapati. Here is confirmation. And it is leg blocking from the Poles that has seen them penalised. And we have just one final order of business now, which is to bring you the victory ceremony for the men's 5,000 metre relay competition. the victory ceremony in the men's 5,000 metre relay competition at the World Cup in Dresden. Polish Kover and Peter Worth once again, the chief referee and assistant referee respectively presenting the medals. Hungary, winners of the bronze medal. Bolaj Bontovic, Daniel Tibors, Mark Gismadia, and Peter Yazapati on the podium. Great result for the Hungarians, absolutely superb. There was always going to be a chance for somebody with most of the top five missing. Yes, Japan, the sixth place nation were there but somebody else had a chance and the Hungarians were the ones who took it. The silver medalists, Japan. Delighted Japanese contingent watching on. One of them with a flag signed by Watanabe Keita. Miyata Shogo, Yoshinagi Kazuki, and Hayashi Kose joining Watanabe Keita on the podium. Republic of Korea.
champions in Dresden taking the initiative when others did not manage to make the final they made it their race great performance by them Park Ji-won, Kim Tae-sung, Jang Sung-woo, Kim Gun-woo, Wang Dae-hon and Lee Jong-min the gold medalists in this penultimate World Cup of the season. The medalists in the men's 5,000 meter relay competition. And all of that brings to a close our coverage of this weekend of World Cup short track speed skating from the Joy Next Arena in Dresden. Now, as we look at the World Cup standings that have seen Korea Republic move right up the leaderboard by one place, but more significantly by a great number of points because they were on 280 before this race. It's all completely alive as we go to the last relay and the last World Cup of the season next week in Poland. It's been a great pleasure having your company for all of the fascinating races at the Joy Next Arena. Well, what remains? One World Cup. Everybody, Gdansk now. We'll see you in Poland.